All right, everyone. Today we got Dark Seer played by OG Sev, two times TI winner. This hero has been picking up a lot of steam lately, especially in competitive Dota. And the reason being is he's found a lot of synergy with a lot of the heroes that are picked nowadays. For example, Tiny, Clockwork, you know, all these melee carries that want to fight early on. Oh. If you like our content, please do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the notification button below so you will be notified when a new video will be released. There's a lot of reasons why Darkseer is a good hero. One of the main reasons is because Ion Shell and Surge just gives like this amplification to one of your heroes who wants to keep on running in and taking fights. And when you do that, they just become the super strong beast. Like for example, Tiny, you know, you can burst someone who has like 900 health, but when you got Ion Shell and Surge on you, you can get better positioning, getting into the fights, and you can burst for like even 1,200 health. Uh, instantly before your opponent can even react so it's really powerful and then late game you also got that vacuum wall of replica combo that gives you this huge team fight capabilities for this hero now laning stage is probably his weakness i would say as a hero and also his mana cost on his spells is very very high uh, why i say laning stage is very weak is because you're constantly ion shelling these creeps early on and you kind of have to make sure you get the assets the same way the opponent can also deny and contest your creeps too so in the early levels, we can see here Seb, he actually double ion shelled the creep starting back here because he wants to get that lane shoved out and get his level two faster than the opponent. Now double ion shell means your opponent's going to have a hard time, especially if they're melee core, to stay in the lane because they're going to be taking way too much damage. Now you're not going to do this on every single creep wave. Later on, you will be ion shelling yourself so you can manipulate that damage in and out uh, in the wave instead of you just having to follow the creep wave and it's going to be a constant damage coming out from the creeps attacking the opponent so you can manipulate whenever you want to do damage to your creep wave and adding that on to your basic damage so early game items as well i just want to mention he's got a quelling blade this game you always want to go quelling blade on darks because you got to secure the creeps and then he only buys one set of region because he's going to buy more region later anyway and because the iron shells are going to be pushing the lane out you can just kind of go with that wave and your opponent is not going to really be able to trade with you because they have to run to the creeps and the creeps with the double iron shell is going to do so much damage level one 24 damage on each one that's 50 damage a second that opponent's going to take if they try to go after you so it's going to be okay and this game he also goes sage mass fairy fire obviously for the extra damage and the baiting ability of when you heal and he's actually going for a basilius which is not something i normally see on darkseer normally i see like bottle or soaring first but OG Seb really likes to go for the Bassy, it seems like. And it kind of helps his position 4, who's going to be his partner in killing the opponent, have some nice solid mana regen too. So here you can just see, he just follows the creep wave. He stays on top of the creep wave where the Ion Shells are as well. And just wants to get some Lassets. Unfortunately for him, the opponent blocked the wave into the tower. So the tower actually killed the creeps with the Ion Shell. In your pubs, most of the time, these players are not blocking the creeps into their tower. So you will be able to just stay in the creep wave and push that wave out. Your, your focus as a Darkseer is always going to be to try and push the lane out and get as much farm as you can. And when, when these creep waves go into your opponent carry and there's ion shells on them, they're going to be very annoyed. They're going to lose a lot of region. You can see here that Sven is already down to one tangle. He's just a minute and a half in. And now he's got that Bassy. He's also getting a magic stick because Lich spans a lot of skills. Bottom, you can try to go for a bottle first or a soaring. If you do go soaring though, you're going to need a lot more regen. So I would actually recommend bottle more than soaring. Uh, so you can just like bottle up bounty runes later on and such. And bottle gives you mana regen and HP without taking away too much of your health that soaring does. And your focus is just going to mainly be on killing creeps. Opponent pulls the wave, no problem. Just go in there, shell yourself now and just farm that up and you just want to like s click or stop stop right click to try and get some uh to get that perfect asset on the creep wave also really good so you can see here the tiny tosses the lich back and seb actually skilled up vacuum uh some players skill up surge because they want the level to surge on level four some players skill up vacuum why vacuum uh, it does 100 damage and it displaces your opponent so if they're trying to run away from you you can bring them back and your both your support and you can uh, do damage to the person who you're going on and also it can cancel tps now here he actually shells up the tiny early on you're not going to shell your support because you actually want to focus more on the farm so you're more likely to shell the creep wave or yourself just to contest for the assets later on once you have 
kill potential you can especially when you're level three you can start shelling your support in the lane so they can also do damage so here they try to go on the lich the lich has frost shield so it's just gonna slow these guys down and run away he almost died right it's really good but that's okay you kick the support out of the lane while you're just trying to farm up and you can see here you're just able to kill the stack at level three so easily and now he shells out the creep. Why shell the creep instead of your hero is because the creep will run into the opponent carry and do damage. Where if you shell yourself, it's going to be hard for you to chase the carry down under the tower because you might start tanking tower shots. So you don't want that, right? So it's actually a much better early game to do that. Later on though, once you do have creep waves running in the, under your tower and you have, let's say, level 5, you have the level 3 iron shell, you can just shell yourself and dive under the tower too. Just don't right click the opponent carry or else you're going to start tanking uh, the tower hits. So at this point, you can see he's actually the highest net worth. Uh, sorry, highest last hitter. Probably the highest net worth too. Not really. His teammates are a bit higher, but he is doing better than the Sven is. And um, he's constantly just pushing the lanes out and applying pressure to the Sven. The Sven is like really annoyed. He had to bring more region out to himself. Like you can see here, he has a bottle. He just healed on up. And now the Tiny's back bottom after roaming mid to help the support with the rune. And he just iron shells up the tiny. He surges the tiny in. Tiny didn't want to die. He could have chased them down and killed them, but then the Sven would have got the kill, so it's not worth it, right? So at this point, now that you're like level four, level five, your goal is just to try and shell up the tiny and give him the surge, or shell up yourself and you can surge after the support and try to kill him too. You can see how much damage the iron shot does. Like this is pretty much such an insane skill. Throughout history, the biggest reason why Darkseer was a strong hero is because he got this ion shell that just helps you farm without you even having to be there or you can use it on your support and you got an insane amount of dps so here just such so as tiny in tiny is able to get that perfect stun combo off and then with the shell on both of these guys they're just able to kill the sven and you're just constantly pushing lanes on number one most important thing with darkseer push lanes out right you got to focus on your farm you got to focus on your levels because this hero needs a lot of levels he needs all his skills to be maxed out to hit that uh, big team fighting capability seb he's just non-stop shoving the lane out and then he just goes and farms the camps and here the sven push the lane out so he's gonna go ahead and push that back go to the big camp he sees the big camp is dead so he just shells up the next wave wants to push this as fast as he can so he can go into the jungle again putting in the creep wave that's going to push a lane out really quickly. And then he goes into the jungle. Farms this up. It's going to go to a small camp here. Farm that up. Put, kicks the Sven out too. <laughs> just putting some harass on him. And the Sven just going to TP on out here. And th at this point, like, he can do two things. He can either roam around or he can just stay bottom and keep pushing this lane in. And let the creeps uh, start doing damage to the tower. At this point, he's looking around the map. He sees like the, his teammates are fighting under the opponent tier 1. There's no point to TP there. So he's just going to keep on cutting the creep waves at this point since the carry has already left the lane. Farms a small camp, farms a big camp. And just like that, you're farming so much. You can look at all those lasses, right? You just farm behind the tower, small camp, big camp. And if there's somebody in the lane, you can just keep on iron shelling the creep wave. Send that into the tower and that's going to do so much damage to the enemy carry. And they're going to be so annoyed by that. And constantly losing health here. So Rubik shows up bottom. And here he actually sees a potential top because the uh, Ricky got doomed up. That's his carry, right? And then the Doom is actually diving the tower. So he decides to TP top Seb here. Go after the Doom. Tiny also rotate up here. And just like that, they get an easy double kill. And he's quite happy with that. And now he's going to the Bounty Rune here. Shells up the Tiny, surges him in. Let's him go ahead. Let, let's his support do all the uh, damage there. So imagine this, you're a Dark Seer, you have Iron Shell and Surge, you can use it on yourself, right? But when you use that on somebody else, it's like you're making another hero into Dark Seer, right? Early game, you're just maxing out your shell, you're maxing out your Surge, so that's all you really are. So if you can add those skills onto another hero, then you're like pretty much like an IO, right? You just combine your skills with somebody else. Now this Tiny is like... Not really tiny when he gets surged and iron shelled, he's tiny Darkseer at this point. That's what some people don't actually realize and why this hero has become very popular and has very high win rate actually in uh, Immortal Bracket. It's because he can boost another hero and make them really, really strong.
And that's where this tiny and clockworks that have been very popular as position fours become even stronger. So they were they're strong even without the darks here. And when you add the darks here onto them, they become like this omega support hero that can just run around and solo kill people just by getting the darks here to ion shell them and surge them up. And later in the game, you can also surge up your carry. So they get this mad movement speed, they can hunt down whichever hero they want to fight. They want to find a support or a mid laner, invoker, whatever that hero may be. This game, uh, we can definitely see Seb. He's most likely going to surge up this TA, you know, send the TA into the fight. The TA can just blink on in, straight into the back lines, chase down these heroes. No one's going to be able to run away from them. The slows won't mean anything either. And item build wise in this game, you can see just buying team items, going for mech, going for guardian greaves. That's going to keep his team alive. It's going to help him stay alive himself in the fights too. Player picks up the haste with his bottle, goes middle, wants to make some plays with his tiny. They're playing together, you can see here. Unfortunately, the opponent reacts heavily here with four heroes, and he will just end up dying to that cold snap. So a little bit of an over aggression. Sometimes you have to be careful as a dark here not to be overly aggressive too, because it could be really fun, you know, just surging in with this insane amount of movement speed and such. And one of the reasons why you want to max out your surge is it has it increases in duration and lowers the cooldown quite a lot. So you have more fighting capabilities. So you look at here in this team fight, he shells up the tiny. And he just pops the uh, surge onto the Ricky. Actually, he shells off the Ricky and pops the surge on him. So he can just go on in for him, right? The Dark Seer is just following behind the Ricky. If he can find like a vacuum to stun someone and bring them back, or a wall just to get that um, big illusion that does a lot of damage, that's nice too. And going into a fight, he can also soak up quite a bit of damage. But mostly, you're actually relying on your teammates to be able to utilize that Ion Shell and uh, Surge combo. They're just a Ricky out. It's a lot like a support from the off lane, pretty much. And you're just constantly buying like these team items and pushing lanes out to keep on building up on your farm. Let's go to net worth here. Pretty high net worth. Mainly because you're just dropping ion shells on creep waves uh, if you want to push lanes out. And th that ion shell creep wave is just going to get all the assets. Or at least like 3 out of 4 of the la creeps will die. And you're, the you're going to be the one getting the um, gold from it. So you can see here in this team fight. He's gonna surge up Tiny, or sorry, uh, surge up himself, go into the fight. He's already Iron Shot 2, vacuum his opponents in there. Just using his body to tank up the damage, so they have to focus him instead of his carry hero. It's really well, well done. And you're very tanky with this mech build too, and you got a magic wand. You got so much HP actually, it's crazy. And here he has the shell on the Tiny, sends him in. Tiny can do so much damage, actually I almost killed that Invoker all by himself, but... A little bit of an overextension there on the tiny. So when you have nothing to do in the game, you can just go back, farm up the jungle. You, you farm so quickly with the level 4 iron shell. You can also farm up the lanes. You can push the lanes out by just dropping one iron shell on one of your creeps. And the creep that you actually want to iron shell is normally the second creep in the creep wave. Because the first creep will tank all the creep, all the damage, and then it will die. So you want to put the iron shell on the second creep, so the opponent creeps won't be killing... Like, just like this, right? So this is the first creep, you don't Iron Shell. This one, you actually, you actually Iron Shell the second melee creep that's going into the lane. So that way, uh, this creep won't take any damage, and the first creep wave will be the one taking the damage, so the Iron Shell can keep on going towards the next creep wave too. And you just keep doing this on all the creep waves, and this is what you call ghost pushing, because the opponent can't see you pushing the lanes out, but you are pushing the lanes out because the Iron Shell gets dropped on the creeps, and that's what's actually pushing the lanes out anyway. And after that, you can just go back into the jungle, keep on farming up, get your items. You just go into the lane, push that lane out. And you want to keep on farming with this hero. Like, you're there to help your teammates uh, with the Iron Shell and the Surge by throwing, out, throwing it on them. But when there's downtime, you're constantly pushing lanes out and farming jungle creeps because you want to keep on scaling. You want to get that levels up. Vacuum, very important spell uh, with your Waddle Replica. That's how you get that massive team fight in the late game. But early game, your team fight is all reliant on your Ion Shell and Surge on your allies. And if you're tanky, like you got a mech, you can Iron Shell yourself and get yourself in the team fight so you can soak up damage and do damage yourself so your teammates and your cores can be able to just jump comfortably because they're going to be focusing you instead. And you can see here, he's just lingering around the mid, playing around with his teammates, surges up his TA, his TA has blinked Deso, now this TA is a monster, right? 600 movement speed, can just run down any heroes, not a problem. 
and this is why and here ta just gonna surge up get get her surge up again and she he, she can just turn around and fight doesn't even matter the opponent sees the surge they try to run away but then if they run away then the ta just gonna turn on them here pops a vacuum wall onto uh three heroes he's tanking it up with his guardian greaves meanwhile his teammates the ta and the ricky can just go on in fight whatever they want to do because they're actually focusing the darks here and as soon as uh, he sees the fight's over, there's no point for him to linger on. He doesn't do any tower damage. So he TPs on out to a lane that's pushing in, starts pushing that lane out. So his teammates can freely just, you know, farm up the neutrals or take, or take farm away from your opponent. While the Darkseer with the Iron Shell is going to be pushing out uh, the other lanes. So here they want to go for Roshan. So what does he do? He just surges up, goes back to his team to help them out. So one of the good things about Darkseer is uh, you can just TP to a tower, like top or bottom or whatever, uh, push the lane up, surge, uh, put an iron shell on the second creep, let that creep wave go away, and then you can surge back to your teammates. So you can constantly just push lanes out, surge yourself, go back to your teammates. And that's why you can see like the items that he buys is uh, Guardian Greaves, you know, Basilius and Bottle. This hero is very man mana intensive. Because using two iron shells will already cost you 260 mana. Popping your surge off cooldown is 50 mana each surge. So you're going to need a lot of mana, a lot of clarity as well. Uh, you can bring that out to yourself, no problem. And you always want to be there ready for your team fights. Uh, so you, right, getting clarities running is would be really good. Because <laughs> you're going to be constantly using iron shells to push lanes out too. So here, just surges his Ricky in. Unfortunately, Ricky gets doomed up. Here comes a wall vacuum combo one easy way to cast your wall vacuum is when your opponent is actually focusing one of your heroes then you know that they're all like tunneling into one hero and then you can just get that nice vacuum on all the guys that are focusing your one hero then get the wall off really easy to execute that uh, nice team fight and this wall is so 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 annoying right here you can see it they're just kind of trying to run away from this Unfortunately, they made a bit of an over-aggressive play instead of just focusing on the tier 2 tower. Here you can see here, the vacuum just going to uh, cancel the Sven stun. And again, you know, there's nothing for him to do. Just going to push lanes out, pop the iron shell on the creep wave here on the second creep. And that's going to naturally... Look at this. It's like all the creeps just die. It's so nice. And that will naturally push the lanes out and it'll give you more options in the game. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Because we get the general idea of like how this show is played and how Seb is playing this show too. Just gonna chill, you know, behind your teammates, help them with their auras. And you can see this game, he's actually going for a solar crest. So this game, he goes for a solar crest because he got a TA and a Riki on your team. That's gonna give a lot of uh, attack speed to those heroes. But if you want other items, you can go for Blink Dagger, which is really nice. You can go for Force Staff, you can go for Pipe. It really depends on your opponent's lineup. Uh, whatever damage sources they have. You can just like try to counter that. Some games I've seen blink BKBs, so you can execute that uh, vacuum wall combo much easier. If you want to go team items, you can go for Solar Crest, you can go for uh, Pipe, you can go for Shivas or something like that to slow down enemies' physical damage. I've even seen Glimmer Capes to help your allies. Whatever pretty much helps your teammates or you survive more in the fights. So this is going to be the final fight here, pretty much. Uh, we're going to see how this is getting executed. Here he gets a solar crest, next item is going for Lotus Orb, also another really good item uh, to help your teammates. And you can see here there's a fight breaking out middle. And look, let's look at what Seb actually does in this team fight. So he iron shells his tiny up, again, very normal stuff. Tiny kind of missed the stun, and then he goes in, drops that wall, drops that vacuum onto two heroes, and now the opponents have to run away from this vacuum combo because it's such a big team fighting ability. And meanwhile, his teammates are jumping the backline, and S4 here on his doom has the doom of the darks here. And you can see how important this Darkseer hero is to uh, the team fights and to the opponent. They have to doom him up because if he dooms anybody else, you're going to surge that guy. That guy's going to get out. They're going to reset the fight and, you know, they're just going to come back and run at you, right? Your big cooldown spells on cooldown. Another reason is you have, you're carrying so many team items that those team items are super annoying in the fights. It's going to make your opponent's carries even stronger, like the Guardian Greaves, the Solar Crest. So you have to get doomed up with Darkseer. Right? So even though you're just constantly using Iron Shells and Surge on your allies and you're just pushing lanes out and buying these big items, 
you're having so much impact in the team fights and that's what you got to understand with this hero so even though you're not running in there yourself and you know killing people with your own iron shell some games that's all right because as long as you boost your teammates they're going to be able to go in they're going to be able to fight better uh, and some games if you're over farmed with your dark seer sure you can actually be the ones going in with your iron shell and surge and just killing people too that's completely fine uh, and there are going to be games like that because you're going to be snowballing through your laning stage. You know, your opponents are going to maybe make some mistakes, run into you, and just die to your Iron Shell, underestimating your uh, Iron Shell potential. So there's a lot of situations like that that also occurs. So you can see here, he just lingers around in the back because he's uh, doomed up. He doesn't care. He just want to bait the opponent. Maybe they go to him. He's okay with that because then the TA can just turn around and take the fights anyway, right? So here, he's just waiting it up, waiting for his, uh, waiting for the doom to end. And instantly the TA going back in because the Doom has ended. And he's just trying to soak up some damage here. He's going to pop the Surge on this TA. Iron Shot her, Surge her. She's just going to be able to run on in. Like a wrecking ball. It's just crazy. Like how much utility that this hero provides. And after that, they're just going to be able to go on up into the high ground. Same thing. Iron Shell Surge on the course. Let them go in. Let them break the buildings for you. Let them be able to dive your opponents. And you just chill in the back. Cast your Solar Crest, cast your Guardian Greaves, cast your spells on your teammates. You can see in this team fight, same thing. Gonna surge up the TA, pop the Guardian Greaves if needed. No problem. Just chill in the back, you know? Just wait for the spells to be casted. And as soon as you drop this wall too, your opponents don't want to fight around this area. Because they need to like, you know, maneuver around. It's just... This hero is just so annoying, right? And it just amplifies your teammates heavily. It's like a lot like an IO, actually. The best hero that I can compare Darkseid to is actually an IO, but uh, with lane shoving capabilities and farming capabilities. And you can see your net worth is so high net worth. And all this net worth, what it does is just gets added on to your teammate, like the Templar Assassin, because it just drops the uh, Iron Shell, the Surge onto the TA, you know, drops the Solar Crest onto the TA, and suddenly her net worth, instead of being 16,000, it's a lot like 20, 22,000, because you get all these buffs put onto you, and that's what Darkseer basically is, so... If you're the type of player who likes to push lanes out, show up in team fights, have impact by letting your opponents, your teammates become even stronger, then Darkseer is probably the hero for you, but hopefully this uh, replay help you understand why Darkseer is strong or what it actually does in the games, then you can play Darkseer yourself in your pub games. If your teammates are too crazy and they are constantly dying, then just shy yourself, you know, focus on farming, focus on pushing lanes out and finding that opportunity where you can just jump on in, get that uh, vacuum wall combo and use those iron shells to do a lot of damage. You know, there's multiple ways that you can actually play this hero and many different item builds that you can go for. So you can just, you know, think about it for yourself, like what you want to play or how you want to play. But this is how uh, OG set plays. Mm. Mm.